Good morning and welcome. I'm State Representative Tina Pickett, and I have the privilege of representing the wonderful part of our state that gave us our new treasurer. I always thought myself lucky to have a woman like Stacy Garrity as my constituent. And today, as we install her as our state's 78th treasurer of the Commonwealth, I can say we're all fortunate. <laughs> On behalf of Treasurer-elect Garrity, I welcome those who are able to join us in person today, as well as those watching at home. Thank you for being here and for being there. For those in attendance, we thank you for strictly adhering to the state and federal recommendations for face masks and social distancing. We gather here during trying times, but we also stand on the verge of better times. Our state and our nation have been divided politically, and yet we are here today for a transition characterized not only by peace, but by grace. So let's begin. We'll have the presentation of the colors. We now ask everyone to rise. As the first troop, Philadelphia City Cavalry, present the colors of our nation and the flag under which Stacy and so many other brave Pennsylvanians have served. Now, please welcome Stacy's cousin, Magnus Wakeley, as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Magnus is the son of Courtney and Mandy Wakeley, and he's a fourth grade student at Lynch Buston Elementary School in Athens, Bradford County. Please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America.
Ready? Please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Please remain standing for an invocation led by Stacy's pastor, Jason Berger of the Christian Life Church. Let us pray. Sovereign Lord, we thank you for occasions such as this, where we can celebrate your goodness and your grace. For you've created a world of order, and you sovereignly rule to bring about your purposes in every moment. Not a hair is known on a head in this state of Pennsylvania that you have not numbered. Not a sparrow falls to the ground in this state that you do not know. We thank you that you entered into time and space and took on flesh to walk among us and give us an example to follow by the way of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he walked the earth. We thank you that through your provision, the wages of sin was paid for at Calvary, offering sinful men and women redemption from the curse and forgiveness of sin. You have established all governing authorities for your purposes. In your word, you tell us the reason for this, namely, to reward those who do good and to punish the evildoer. With every office in the structure of governing authorities, this is your purpose, and for that, we thank you. It is because of your grace that we can celebrate days like today and look forward with anticipation when those who honor you are placed in public office. We thank you that through your sovereign plan, you have prepared Stacy for this office. From success in both the military and the day-to-day -day business, you have prepared her for such a task as this. So we gather today as one people and ask that you would give Stacy strength and wisdom as Pennsylvania's next state treasurer. And we thank you for this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Please be seated. We have many guests from across the state and across the political spectrum with us today. I'd like each of you to stand as, I, as we recognize you, and I ask everybody, please hold your applause until we're finished. Two members of Pennsylvania's congressional delegation have joined us today. They include Representative Glenn G.T. Thompson from the 15th District the Dean of our delegation and honorary co-chair of the Garrity Transition Team, our Congressman from the 12th District, Fred Keller, the Majority Leader of the House of Representatives, Carrie Benninghoff, the Majority Whip of the House of Representatives, Donna Oberlander. I'm pleased to welcome the Majority Whip of the State Senate, Senator John Gordner. We have a number of members of the General Assembly with us today, and I would ask all members of the General Assembly to please stand. We're joined by many distinguished members of the military. General Paul Hill and Mrs. Hill are with us as well. General Hill commanded the Army 800th Military Police Brigade. Colonel Frank Howard. Colonel Mazio Mesler. Command, Sergeant Major Ryan Irvin. Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Havens. 
Lieutenant Colonel Doug Prieta, Major Al Garbarino. We're also joined by leaders of the Republican Party, Chairman Lawrence Tabus, Vice Chair Bernadette Comfort, Republican National Committeeman Andy Riley, and Transition Team Honorary Co-Chair Calvin Tucker. Please join me in welcoming these distinguished guests. Stacy graduated from Bloomsburg University in 1986. We are delighted to have the Bloomsburg University Choir with us under the direction of Dr. Alan Baker. They will perform Hymn to America by Grammy-winning composer Stephen Paulus. Thank you. I mentioned earlier that we live in a time of deep divisions in public life, but we also live in a time of grace and cooperation. Our next speaker could not be here in person today, but he has been here on behalf of Stacy as she prepares to serve as our treasurer. What is noticeable, notable is that this speaker was the man she defeated in the November election but who did not hesitate to set an example of decency. Please hear the words of Stacy's predecessor, outgoing treasurer, 
Joe Torcella. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in person today. I'm very glad to be here in this way. When Treasurer-elect Garrity first asked me if I'd be willing to speak today, I said, sure. In fact, I've had some remarks for swearing-in day prepared for many months now. They just weren't the ones I'm giving here today. Actually, I was at first hesitant to agree because today isn't about me, it's about her and her proud family and her friends and supporters. And the focus should be on the important work ahead. And how can I say this? It's just not the usual thing to have the outgoing office holder, the guy you ran against, speak at your swearing in. But then Stacy explained what she had in mind. Her background is in the military. And when there's a change of command in the military, there's a ceremony where the outgoing commander gives a report, thanks the troops, and entrusts the men and women who were in his or her care to the new general. That tradition isn't just about civility and graciousness. It's a reminder that service itself is sacred and that the institutions we serve are bigger and more important than ourselves. Now, it's simply the nature of our democracy that the new treasurer and I have had plenty of differences. We will, I am sure, have many more. But for all of that, Stacy's truly gracious and truly honorable invitation reassured me that she too sees service as sacred. It's easy to forget it, especially these days, but this is how a transition of power is supposed to work. The treasurer-elect and I have spoken often over the past few weeks, and she has always reached out with a focus on the important work of this office and an understanding of the real difference it can make. Many of the incredibly talented public servants I relied on during my four years in office will be continuing on. And our conversations, Stacy and I, have given me real confidence that she is beginning this job with something truly indispensable and commendable, respect for this important institution and the people it serves. Even during the heat of the campaign, I always admired Stacey Garrity's service to our country, and I have heard her speak sincerely and movingly about that service and her fealty to the oath she took when she enlisted. Today, she will take another oath, as I once did, swearing to uphold our Constitution as treasurer. We take those oaths because constitutions are not just pieces of paper. They're agreements we make to live up to the spirit behind the words on paper. There's a great quote from Judge Learned Hand written during the darkness of World War II in his speech titled The Spirit of Liberty that says it better than I ever could. I often wonder, he said, whether we do not rest our hopes too much upon constitutions, upon laws, and upon courts. These are false hopes, believe me, these are false hopes, he continued. Liberty lies in the hearts of men and women. When it dies there, no constitution, no law, no court can even do much to help it. While it lies there, it needs no constitution, no law, no court to save it. Treasurer Garrity, I have high hopes that you will tend to that spirit of liberty. And in the spirit of your gracious invitation, I will indeed give you my final report before you take the reins. When I stood in your shoes, I said no task was more important than restoring honor and integrity to an elected office that has seen far too many scandals in the past. So we banned the use of middlemen on investment contracts, won awards, for unprecedented financial transparency and instituted 
the department's first ever conflict of interest policy and chief integrity officer. I said that the job of safeguarding the money was not about decimal points or zeros, but remembering that the dollars in Pennsylvania Treasury are literally the hard work, the hopes, the dreams, in some cases the lifelines of 13 million citizens. So our second motto was to watch over their money as carefully as if it were our own. And we fired Wall Street and hired low-cost index funds, invented right here in Pennsylvania. It's resulted in $700 million in savings, a first-ever silver Morningstar rating for our 529 career and college savings plan. And a plan, if Harrisburg follows through, to change the culture of our pension funds and save $9 billion for retirees and taxpayers. And finally, I said that the commonwealth, two words, of our one word commonwealth should be used for the people, not the powerful. Used to expand opportunity, to fight a rising tide of inequality and to strengthen families and communities across Pennsylvania. So we leveraged the power of our state's investments to hold Facebook accountable, to fight against climate change and for diversity in boardrooms, and to demand accountability at the companies that have peddled opioids into our communities. Maybe closest to my heart, we created Keystone accounts with bipartisan support, making Pennsylvania the first large state in the country where every kid in every zip code gets an automatic $100 starter deposit to a 529 account at birth or adoption. I fully expect, Treasurer Garrity, that you will chart your own course and find your own ways to leave the institution better off than you found it. But I also hope that you will build on many of these initiatives because they are not the accomplishments of any single elected official. They're a testament to what can happen when Pennsylvanians come together for each other. And if the credit belongs to anyone, it belongs to the talented public servants of Pennsylvania Treasury. The men and women you will have the honor of serving with. I have held positions at every level of government, and I have never worked with a more talented, dedicated, caring team. So to them today, I want to publicly express my gratitude, my respect, and my love. You are in good hands, Treasurer Garrity. And to you, I want to say again, congratulations and good luck. I hope that you find even a fraction of the satisfaction, the joy, and the pride that I did in this post. I join citizens around the Commonwealth in hoping for your success. Etched into the stone on the finance building you'll be working from soon are the words, all public service is a trust given in faith and accepted in honor. So it is the last honor of my term to convey this office and the people who serve it to your safekeeping. Godspeed, good luck, and thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Trisella, for joining in today's ceremony. And again, I ask everyone to join me in thanking him for helping to make this day an example of what is best in politics. As member of the U.S. Army Reserves, Stacy Garrity served a remarkable three deployments in defense of America. In 1991, in Operation Desert Storm, in 2003, in Operation Iraqi Freedom, and in 2008, in Operation Enduring Freedom. 
She was awarded the Bronze Star twice for ex exceptional service and received the Legion of Merit before retiring from the Army Reserve with the rank of Colonel. I would like to welcome to the podium Command Sergeant Major Ryan Irvin, retired of the 744th MP Battalion to this podium. Good morning, Colonel Garrity, Dan, Garrity family, distinguished guests, family. <clears throat> I am retired Command Sergeant Major Ryan Irvin. I had the extreme honor to be a part of Colonel Garrity's command team while assigned to the 744th Military Police Battalion, which is home stationed in eastern Pennsylvania. As her command sergeant major, I was charged with providing recommendations to her and her staff on all matters pertaining to the enlisted and their families. Colonel Garrity never dismissed my concerns or my recommendations that were directed towards the welfare of the soldiers or my passion to uphold military customs and tradition that enhance the professionalism of our troops. Colonel Garrity is an outstanding leader and role model for others to follow and emulate. She has an uncanny ability to weave together a leadership style that stands on the foundation of the Army values. Those values are loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. You're going to hear every one of those in these speeches today about her. The values set forth a foundation of teamwork, excellent performance, and respect for others. The foundation allows for a strong and ready army which can adapt, improvise, and overcome. The ingenuity of the U.S. troops should never be overlooked or underestimated, and Colonel Garrity ensured that each of her subordinate leaders understood the importance of that. Colonel Garrity's ability to capture the spirit of America's bravest and brightest is reflected in the leaders she trained and mentored to replace her in command. Colonel Garrity is a master of building a winning team, and with unprecedented skills, she represents each of her teammates with her leadership and courage. It has been one of my greatest honors to serve beside Colonel Garrity, and while it might seem that I tower over her physically, I have never seen anyone with greater moxie. Her fighting spirit is contagious, and the great people of Pennsylvania are far better off having her in office. I'm confident that she will be working as hard for them as she worked for us. Congratulations, Stacy, and Godspeed. Thank you, CSM Irvin. Right out of Bloomsburg University, Stacy got a job in Tawanda, Bradford County. Over 34 years, she worked her way up to be one of only two female vice presidents. She ran two business units where she was responsible for all sales, all marketing, and all operations for aerospace, aerospace defense, and power and energy. Our next speaker, David Vine, worked with Stacy for more than 15 years. He recruited, hired, and promoted Stacy many times. But most importantly, he supported her during two deployments overseas. Please join me in welcoming the president of Vinyl Metals, David Vine. Good morning. I'm honored to be here today to witness Stacy's inauguration. I have known Stacy for nearly 30 years and approach today with mixed feelings. We are in a divided time with divisive leaders on both sides of the aisle. To some extent, we have lost our way as Americans. We have compromised our ideals and values and expectations, selected politicians over leaders, and chosen infotainment over news. But today, this one state office is a glimmer of hope. And Stacy, I see someone who I have trusted in business, someone our nation has trusted in a war zone. She has earned our trust as a steward of the Commonwealth's finances. In business, she fought for U.S. industry and U.S. jobs. 
Stacy was a watchdog and fought against competitors that tried to circumvent U.S. laws and interests. I was Stacy's manager during her last two deployments and proudly supported her service. She maintained a career while protecting our nation. There are sacrifices in service which most of us do not consider. I thank Stacy for her service, and I thank the active service members and veterans here today for their service. And I thank the police officers here today for their service. With apologies to the career politicians here, it's refreshing to see a business leader from industry elected to office. Stacy's was an unexpected win. She ran against an incumbent. She was outspent eight to one, all in a year in which the top of the Republican ticket fell short. This inauguration is a glimmer of hope. I feel this hope because we elected a qualified and experienced leader who also has the integrity, ideals, and values we desperately need. Congratulations, Stacy. Congratulations on a great business career and a great military career and on your transition to this new chapter of public service. Thank you, David. Our next speaker, Eric Rao, is the Chief Financial Officer of Global Tungsten and Powders Corporation. Eric and Stacy worked together for 20 years, where they both served on the senior management team. Please welcome Eric Rao. Good morning. As Tina mentioned, I'm Eric Rao, Chief Financial Officer of Global Tungsten and Powders Group. I drove down here today from our corporate headquarters in that small town of Tawanda, in that small county of Bradford, that you've heard a great deal about. I'm sure you hear a little more about that corner of Pennsylvania as you move on today. However, I grew up in Harrisburg. Both my parents actually worked for the state government, and I had a number of internships uh, in my high school and college career. So I have a sense of the importance and some of the new challenges that Stacy faces. Let me tell you a little bit about Stacy from my perspective. I've known her for over 25 years. When I started at Global in Tungsten, my work cubicle was right beside Stacy's. Her competence, competence and work ethic were always accompanied with compassion. I can remember that first year waiting for my unborn son where she gave me a gift that I never forgot to this day small Penn State stuffed animal that must have made an impact because he just went to Penn State, graduated, and now his younger brother uh, is going there in the fall. So during those early years, I moved, in, moved into different roles throughout the country and the company as Stacy continued to move up into different roles and traveled the globe during her military service. Stacy Gary has had an outstanding career with GTP from accounting and finance to marketing to management, from that small cubicle to being one of the first of two female vice presidents of our company, growing and leading two of our most important business units. Her absence will be felt, but her presence will be felt in this city. As both Stacy and I moved up into different locations, we always seemed to end up back in Tawanda. I spent a lot of time with Stacy in Tawanda, but I spent a lot more direct time with her around the world, as far as west as San Francisco, as far as east as India, at our small location there, as far north as our facility in Finland, as we completed that acquisition. Stacy and I were two of the three managing directors of our Czech Republic facility, and we spent most of our time with operational meetings and um, operations reviews in Austria and Germany. As we worked together through various budgets, strategic, operational projects, I was able to see and appreciate her intelligence, team-focused, relationship building, hardworking, and tactical qualities that are so apparent today. Outside of work, Stacy always took a leadership role in our company's philanthropic and public service efforts, whether that was the United Way, support for disadvantaged families at Christmas, 
assistance of people in Haiti, leading many of our employee association events, and serving together on the local hospital board. So it was no surprise when Stacy decided to look at public service as one of her next goals. As always, she aimed high and she hit the mark. So knowing her in business, in the community, and from those days in that small cubicle where both of our careers began, I can say without a doubt that the Pennsylvanians have made the right choice for the state treasurer position. So on behalf of the Global Tungsten family, its management, its employees, we are grateful for what Stacy has done for GTP, proud of what she has done for our country, and excited to see what she will do for all Pennsylvanians. So congratulations, Stacy. Thank you, Eric. Anyone who knows the treasurer-elect knows how important family is to her. The oldest of four girls, Stacy and her sisters were raised in Sayre, Bradford County. Please welcome sisters Maureen, Paige, and Jennifer, and niece Emily. I'm excited and honored to be here for my sister, Stacy. Let me tell you a little bit about her. In a word, she's a worker. My sisters and I were always taught we could achieve anything with hard work. When we were younger and talked about our dreams, I don't remember Stacy seeing herself in such an important role. But none of her sisters is surprised today. Stacy and I are only 15 months apart, and I was one year behind in school. Stacy was always fiercely protective and loyal to me. She was the big sister you wanted in life. Her fierce loyalty to me and my family has never wavered, and her compassion for others is shown by deed. Our family was raised with a strong work ethic and Stacy is Exhibit A. Stacy always had work. She mowed our church lawn, had a newspaper route, babysat, and held three jobs during high school and college, all while participating in ROTC. Stacy's energy and drive are without equal. And let me just say to her long-suffering husband, Dan, I know you're happy. Stacy is now down to one job. And it's a job Stacy will work at tirelessly for all of Pennsylvania. I know in my heart there is no better person for the job. And Pennsylvanians can rest easy with Stacy at the helm of the Treasury. My name is Paige Evans, and it is my honor to say a few words about my sister, Stacy. All of my life, Stacy has been an inspiration with her love of humanity, love of country, love of family. Whether it is providing food for people in need, collecting shoes for children in Haiti, or raising dollars for the United Way, Stacy simply cares about people. She is tough, fearless, and strong. For 30 years, she served our nation in uniform with three tours in the Persian Gulf. What stands out about her time was that she treated everyone with dignity and respect. That's why combatants held at Camp Buka called her the angel of the desert. She didn't just guard prisoners, she created an orphanage for Iraqi children. She loves our family and the human family. I know that those who are no longer among us, grandparents, uncles, and our nephew Austin are watching from above with pride. 
Our family and our state are better for Stacy walking among us. And as always, she will be walking in front, leading the way. Stacy Garrity is a champion of the people, all people. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Liberta, and I'm Stacy's youngest sister. I want to tell you a story, a story that shows what kind of person is about to become our next treasure. We grew up in a little town called Sare. It was the kind of place where people look out for each other, but that's a learned behavior. And it's something Stacy taught us all by example. One day, we were on the street in town, and a homeless man passed by. He had no shoes. Stacy didn't hesitate. She dashed into a shoe store and bought this man a pair. She has always behaved as if every moment was a chance to prove her faith in God, her country, and humanity. When my husband became physically disabled, Stacy went to bat for him. And to this day, she continues to get him the services he needs to have a full life. Stacy is the oldest of the four girls. I'm the youngest. She has always been a second mother to me, helping with schoolwork, training me for cross country meets, even writing the occasional note to my school excusing an absence. Stacy is coming to the treasurer's office and bringing a big measure of common decency with her. And I'm so proud that my big sister is being given a chance to show what a Pennsylvania girl can do. Stacy, or Aunt Stacy, has always been someone I love and admire. By word and deed, she has played a significant role in my life. Growing up in Nebraska, some of my fondest memories were of road trips to stay the week with her. I remember being too excited to even sleep because I was staying with someone whose very presence brought life and happiness to the moment. From my teenage years to this day, Aunt Stacy has been a role model, confidant, and friend. We may not live close to each other, but I know she is a text, phone call, or plane ride away when I need her. I guess you could say we live close to each other, whatever the physical distance. She has made a positive influence on many of the decisions I have made in my personal and professional life. Aunt Stacy taught me to aim high, to never settle for less. Stacy embodies what I know to be a strong, independent woman. And I know that, as Pennsylvania State Treasurer, she will have the same influence on other young women such as myself. I cannot think of a better person to serve the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Aunt Stacy. Thank you for leading the way. So, who is Stacy Garrity? You could say she's Pennsylvania. Honest, hardworking, compassionate. The kind of people who don't hide behind slogans or polite, meaningless words. She's from a place that doesn't apologize for its patriotism and doesn't accept excuses. So here's a short story about Stacy. Tells you something about her character, and her can-do spirit, and never quitting. She and her sisters were cheerleaders, and Stacy was cheerleading. She was on a pyramid, and she fell and broke her arm. Well, not only did she break her arm in one place, but she broke her arm in three places. So she wanted to play softball, and the broken arm didn't help with that. But she did not let that slow her down. So she decided, 
that she would run the two-mile relay with her sisters. And she did that in spite of the fact that she had a cast on her arm. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is, bottom line, she wasn't a quitter then, and she's not a quitter now. In Iraq, she ran a detention camp that kept thousands of terrorists off the battlefield. She succeeded by telling them the story of America and by being the face of our nation's decency. Prisoners called her the Angel of the Desert. At Camp Buka in the south of Iraq, one U.S. Army reservist became known to prisoners as the Angel of the Desert. Her name is Stacy Garrity. The Angel of the Desert has returned to the mountains of northern Pennsylvania. After more than a year, she in came home with two bronze stars, the Legion of Merit, and a hunger to keep serving. A leader in business, a decorated veteran, now ready to take the reins at the state treasury and work for all of us. Stacy Garrity, she's one of a kind, our kind. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Megan McCarthy King, Judge of the Superior Court of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, joined by Stacy's brother-in-law, the Honorable Christopher P. Baker, Justice of the New York State Supreme Court, will now administer the oath of office. I, Stacey Garrity, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend, that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and I will discharge the duties of my office, and I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. With fidelity. Members of Congress, state legislators, distinguished guests, friends, family, fellow military, supporters, and fellow Pennsylvanians, thank you for being here today. Before starting, I want to call your attention to an act of grace too often missing in public life. Joe Torcella, the man who precedes me in office, spoke to us by video today. Joe and I differ in our politics. That's what elections are about. Yet, Joe has risen above politics in the days since November 3rd and helped ensure a smooth transition. That generosity of spirit marks him as an outstanding man and a great Pennsylvanian. Joe, as we say in the military, thank you for your service. This day doesn't belong to any one party or to any one person. 
It belongs to all of us, a people defined by where we're from. I come from a place where we don't lock our doors. We live in the belief that all mankind is our friend and that people are, at their core, good. We live within the boundaries of what William Penn called his holy experiment, a place grounded in common decency and fair play. It's a place of friendship, and we live out the words of Penn who wrote, a true friend advises justly, assists readily, adventures boldly, takes all patiently, defends courageously, and continues a friend unchangeably. We find fulfillment in being charitable to others, but don't seek charity for ourselves. Where I come from, people believe in taking responsibility for their own lives. But we know that as a people, we have a moral obligation to help others. And in return, we expect a certain standard of behavior from those we help. It's a social contract that blends personal freedom with the essential impulse to do good for others. I learned these things from a woman who is here with us today. Her name is Beverly Arby. She held a pretty high office in her own right. She's my mom. With her is a man whose strength of character and steady guidance helped shape me. He's my father, Howard Garrett. And both my father and mother supported their daughter when she went off to war in the deserts of Iraq. I can't begin to imagine how hard it was to live with that worry and never let it show as they supported my decision. Also here is someone who also waited for those deployments and who has always acted as a partner in life. My better half. His name is Dan Giese. The poet John Milton said, they also serve who only stand and wait. And these three waited. And today, as their daughter and wife begins a new chapter, this is their moment too. And now, I'd like them to be stand and be recognized. Dad, Mom, Dan, thank you. To those who supported me in this campaign, the volunteers, the staff, and to my sisters, cousins, aunts and uncles who supported me in life, I can only offer a humble word of thanks and a promise to live up to your expectations. I am here today as Pennsylvania's new treasure. It is now my job to be the steward of taxpayer money and to make certain that government is open, honest, and accountable. There are many arcane and technical aspects to the new task before me. I am ready to confront them. I told you about where I'm from because this job is every bit as much about the place we live and the people we are as it is about the wealth we guard and the currency we spend. It's about making sure that unclaimed property, billions of dollars of your money, is returned to its rightful owners. It's about promoting college savings for working families and the ABLE account to assist people with special needs. It's about creating a system that will allow taxpayers to go online and examine every check written from the Treasury. It's their money, and they deserve to know how every dollar is spent. If there's an emblem of my hopes for this office, it can be found in this small coin that we had made for today. It's called a challenge coin. And they were first created so that someone, when challenged, could prove they belong to the military. In the years since, they've become an emblem of ideals, of goals, and a reward for missions accomplished. 
Mine carries two symbols, one representing the motto of the military police, assist, protect, defend. And the other side is our state seal with its motto, virtue, liberty, independence. Service to our country, liberty at home. These are truly two sides of the same coin. If there is any philosophy I bring to this office, it is that government has a moral obligation to do what is best for people and to always remember that the economy is here to serve people, not the other way around. <laughs> Free markets are, to my thinking, the best avenue to prosperity. Personal freedom and self-determination are the truest expressions of human nature. Service to others, be it in an elective office or wearing the uniform of our country, is the highest calling. And getting the job done in good faith and with honest effort is the watchword by which I promise to serve you. We have just come through a year of unprecedented challenges, hard feelings, and some deep losses. There's a saying that if you focus on the rearview mirror, you'll miss where you're headed. I say we look ahead toward a place of optimism and cooperation. Let's start the journey. God bless all of you. God bless Pennsylvania. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in thanking Dr. Baker and the Bloomsburg University Choir for their participation today. Now, Stacy's father, Howard Garrity, will lead us in our benediction. I would ask you to remain standing for the benediction and for the retiring of the colors. Mr. Garrity. Let us pray, please. 
God, as we conclude this inauguration of the Honorable Stacy Garrity as the 78th State Treasurer of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we ask your blessings upon family, friends, elected officials, and their families. Thank you for our Armed Forces personnel, and we pause to remember those that have made the ultimate sacrifice to keep America free. God, we thank you for our law enforcement personnel, first responders, our doctors, nurses, and members of the healthcare community. Bless them and their families. We pause to remember family members that are no longer with us here today. God, we pray that you continue to bless Stacy and continue to provide her with the spiritual strength, wisdom, and guidance to serve the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and its citizens to the best of her ability. Bless Stacy and be with her in those sometimes lonely moments of difficult decisions and provide her with wisdom and courage to always do what is morally right. We ask your blessings upon the Treasury staff and their families, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, its citizens, and the United States of America. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. I want to thank and acknowledge everyone who made today's inauguration so special. In a particular way, a special thanks to the secretary and staff of the Department of General Services for working with us so well under difficult circumstances. A special thanks to the forum staff for all their hard work making this event possible. Lastly, to Treasurer Garrity. Thank you once again for answering the call to serve your fellow citizens. This does conclude our swearing-in ceremony. <laughs>